sometimes referred to as the Swiss cheese plant, occasionally known as the monster plant by my kids, this common houseplant is a favorite of mine when it comes to painting. Let's get started with the outline of the leaf. I like to begin with an irregular heart shape. I'll display some examples of monstera leaves on the screen here. As you can see, the leaves come in a variety of different shapes and colors, so keep some of these examples in mind when you're planning out your own painting. I'm adding a center stalk and offshoot veins on both sides. And now I'm basically taking bites out of the leaf in between the veins. I'm trying to keep my pencil marks very light. And I'm also gonna be adding a few holes here and there. And now this next step, it isn't completely necessary, but it does make things easier. Using masking fluid, I'm going to be marking off the holes. And it doesn't take much, just a very light layer should do. And actually, I'm realizing now that I should have erased those marks from the cutouts before starting the masking fluid, but that's all right. I'll just be careful not to touch it. I'm also marking off the veins. And for this part, I'm not worried about getting every single bit of the veins because I prefer that imperfect look. So my lines are going to be broken rather than continuous. This is just my own preference. All right, so I'm just gonna let this dry for a few minutes. And now we're ready to begin the painting. I'm painting in the entire leaf with plain water. And I'm careful not to go out of the lines too much because I want plenty of blending and mixing within the leaf, but not so much outside of it. I'm using a size two pointed round brush and I'm loading it with plenty of water so that we can get maximum movement when we do get to the paint. Okay, I think that should do it. Now I'm bringing in a mix of cadmium yellow and undersea green. I'm sticking mainly to the areas surrounding the veins. I want these areas to be lighter than the rest of the leaf. And now I'm adding a mix of hooker's green and undersea green, working my way around the entire outline of the leaf. I normally tape my paper down, but I didn't with this project because I'm not wetting the entire piece so it isn't really as necessary. Plus, it's nice to be able to move my paper and rotate it as I work from one section to the next. I don't know about you, but I'm really good at some motions, like usually motions that are heading towards the right, but then I struggle with the opposite motions moving towards the left, and it makes it very difficult for me to do anything that requires precise symmetry. Grabbing some more paint, I'm bringing the green in closer to the yellow. And I know it looks like a bit of a mess right now, doesn't it? But trust the process. I think we'll actually get some really nice results at the end. I'd love to see some blue in this leaf. So taking a mix of viridian hue and turquoise, I'm dropping in this beautiful color, letting it spread into the green and yellow. I've switched to a smaller brush, a size 00, and I'll likely be sticking with this brush for the duration of this painting. Next, we'll begin to bring in darker values to add some depth and dimension. I'm using perline green, possibly my favorite green currently on my palette, and I'm only adding it to the tips and the undersides of the slits. The painting is still wet, so watch how it spreads upwards ever so slightly. I wanna create more of a shadowy look, so I'm going over it again with an even darker value of perline, and I'm keeping it closer to the edge this time. I have a monster plant in my house that is trying to take over my living room. I've tried tying the stalks together in an attempt to make it grow upwards, 
but it refuses and finds a way to just keep growing outwards in all directions instead. So if anyone has any tips for me, please leave them in the comments. I would really appreciate it. And I'm inserting a photo of my rogue monster plant. This step that we're doing here can be repeated again if you want even more depth with darker paint closer to the edge each time. And now I'm looking for those holes that we covered up and I'm adding perline to the tops, which is where we would expect to see some shadows. Now that the paint is dry, it's time to remove the masking fluid and reveal the white spots. And I found that once I lift up the first little bit with my nail, I can start to roll it. And once I have a small ball of rubber, it easily picks up the rest along the way. This is much easier than trying to peel off each little bit individually. Okay, so I think now I'm gonna add just a touch more perline to a few of those spots that need it. It still surprises me how much lighter the colors become once they dry. At this point, you might choose to add a little color to those veins, but I think I'm gonna leave it like this. I kinda like the white. I am, however, going to add some little speckles to my leaf. I'm choosing perline green, but I think the Viridian turquoise mix would also look great. And you could certainly load up your brush and just go for a really fun splatter, but I'm gonna go for a more subtle look with this one and just place small dots around the perforations and slits. And this, of course, isn't a necessary step, but I think it looks good with that added bit of contrast. So here we go. You can hang it and frame it as is or make it into a bookmark. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to cut around my leaf, leaving close to a quarter inch of white for a border. I think this is probably bookmark number seven for me this week, since I've been making them for a book club that I'm in. I love bookmarks and I change them out very frequently. And I'll elaborate on that in a moment. All right. So once I've punched my hole, I'm folding a piece of twine that's probably about six inches in length, and I'm just gonna fold it in half and then push it through the front side of the hole right at the fold. I'll grab the two ends and pull them through. And now I have this nice little loop that's visible from the front. I'm also choosing to add a coordinating bead and securing it with a single knot, pulling the knot downward so it's snug against the bead. You could laminate your bookmark, but I like to leave mine like this. And that's because I read almost every night before I fall asleep, and so I go through a lot of books. And if I really enjoy a particular story, I like to write the name of the book and a few thoughts about it so that I'll remember later. And then when someone asks for a book recommendation, I might not draw a complete blank. And I can go back to my envelope of bookmarks from time to time and remember not only the stories that I read, but also the art that I made. And I would much prefer to keep an envelope of bookmarks and pass the books along for someone else to enjoy. Now let's look at some variations. So of course I played around with the shapes, some of them wide, some of them thinner. And then for some, I added multiple colors to my splatters and dots, or I used a white gel pen. And on this one, I added much more blue and I drew the leaf at an angle rather than straight on. For some of these, I painted the veins with a soft yellowish green. There are so many ways to paint Monstera leaves, and I hope that now you're ready to paint your own. Have fun with your shapes and your colors. There's no right or wrong way, so just go for it. Thank you for watching.